let's get some facts on the table. Efficacy, safety of once every two months, uh, aripiprazole, laroxyl, extended release. Where are we in this just pharmacologically and, and clinically? Well, I can't say what is best. Is it a month, two months, three months? It really depends on the patient. For some patients, you actually want to see them monthly. For others, you can see them every two months, every three months. So it depends on what the patient needs are. If you wanted to go once every two months, what are the most common side effects that you see? Well, there, there wouldn't be any different side effects if it's once a month or every two months. I would say the major risk is that with the two months, you have the advantage that it's going to last longer. But in terms of side effects, they would be the same. What about injection site issues, injections altogether? The injection site issue is usually not a problem at all. They're very, they're another improvement from the older ones. These are water-based, they're not oil-based. They have, they're much better tolerated as an, an injection. And patients, once they're on them, actually want to stay on them because it's, they don't have this worry or this concern about taking my medicine every day. And they actually, over time, significantly improve their level of functioning. So their insight is very poor early on, but many of the patients that I have that are on long-acting injectables prefer to stay on them. And the long actings work better for individuals leaving correctional institutions because we know that there is sometimes a delay in care in the community. And so if a person has a long acting injection, you have a wider window in order to get them an appointment in the community. There's another advantage of the long lasting is that uh, medication discontinuation carries a very high risk of relapse. And that risk is higher in the oral medications as opposed to the injectables. So that is an additional benefit of that. Uh, but in terms of effect, let, let's go. I, I understand the, the ability to just, if you'll forgive, set it and forget it for two months, mm -hmm. which is a real advantage, certainly for bridging. But the actual drug, there's an injectable and an oral formulation of extended release <clears throat> uh, aripiprazole or oxal, right? Um, are these agents interchangeable? in terms of clinical effectiveness, regardless of the Well, if you of take the oral every day, they're interchangeable. The problem is, <clears throat> so that it's the same compound per se, the active ingredient is the same, although that, you know, metabolized differently, going through the liver or other things, but patients that take their medicine every day in schizophrenia, unfortunately, is a rarity. Right, or they don't take it at the same time, and <laughs> they skip when, a day. Uh, absolutely. When you look at clinical trials, where they compare, uh, uh, by mouth versus an injectable, and you know that the patient is taking it, the efficacy is exactly the same. There is no difference in terms okay. of the efficacy. But, you know, it strikes me, when, when you look at patients taking it every day, that implies it's a study. And study patients are notoriously of course. Absolutely. That's why because everybody's all over them Absolutely. About Absolutely. Out in the real world, nobody's in So the, you have to do real world studies, and you can look at patients before and <clears> after a newer agent long-acting injectable, and you can certainly see there's much data that they do better once they're on the long-acting injectable versus when they're prescribed oral. You can't really because use studies for that. Is there a typical yeah. patient who's, uh, if you will, the, the propositus for the injectables? Is there some patient with a significant mental illness with schizophrenia who is clearly the candidate for the injectables, whatever the cost? Actually, as you just said, the candidate is, is the patient with schizophrenia. Because That's the it? majority of patients with schizophrenia <clears throat> are not adhering to their medication regimen. It would be more so who is not a candidate, and that's pretty rare to find someone that's not a candidate. Actually, patients with bipolar disorder are really very good candidates for the reason that bipolar patients, patients with bipolar disorder are very non-adherent. Uh, in the past, we used to think that the best patients, uh, or the best candidates were those who had multiple episodes, patients who had been chronic for a long time. And actually, that is not the case. Really? Uh, Frequently, a patient is non-adherent when the patient first become ill, first episode. It is act, that is the time that they're most non-adherent. We used to think that the, the injectables were for the chronic multiple episodes, but in fact, first episode population is a, a very good population to think about these medications. And, and we usually that, don't. Especially isn't that the better time when them. they're at increased risk of suicide as well? And violence. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. And this is actually when we can, and not only that, most patients, when they develop mental illness, they do not uh, also suffer from substance abuse. So this is a, a time to do it's preventive a window, medicine. A window. If, because they are at risk. So if we do prevention there, we will prevent of the deterioration with pres prescribing the, non the lung acting and also make sure that they, they, they don't get into substance abuse. Can you, I'm sorry, go ahead, you wanted to say No, something. you know, we have a, a program, it's the only one in the country, it takes people who otherwise would have gone to a competency restoration facility 
and instead puts them in a program to help reintegrate them back into the community. And they're using a long-acting injectable. And we're finding that the patients prefer it, that their compliance with our program is much improved, and their re-arrest rate is significantly reduced. And so for us, we have found it to be rather beneficial. I do concern myself with some of the side effects and something that definitely has to be well, monitored. We'll but at the same time, in terms of helping keep people out of our system, it has been very effective. Can you, can you adjust this stuff? Is it a one-size-fits-all dose and, and dosing frequency, or can you tailor it? Well, there's differences among the medications. You mentioned the Aripiprazole has a variety of dosing available. Now, has, I guess that's what I was getting at. And it has a variety of dosing intervals. So you suggested, you know, maybe for some patients you want once a month. Maybe some patients you want every six weeks, maybe some patients want every two months. And you have that ability with that medication. 